Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, Canada for resolutions per minute three. And we have an absolutely stacked, as they say, night of cards. Night of cards, night of matches for you. So we're going to see what kind of trouble we can get up to tonight. First of all, we've got Harris versus Shogun. And uh, there is really no rhyme or reason for this one. I just basically need like a, a match to sort of fill out the seventh, uh, seventh spot, but that doesn't make this match completely meaningless. These are two top tier wrestlers, top tier performance, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how both uh, how bo they both does do. So yeah, let's go. This is a start. Weighing in at 280 pounds, Harris. And here we have one half of the opening match tonight, Harris. A man who has had pretty good results, all things considered. He's never fully reached world title gold. He came close, actually, at the first break even pay per view. Like the first pay-per-view ever for PBW back when it was just PBW and he challenged Michael Young his former Misfits buddy in the main event Michael Young won that world title Harris has never quite fully reached the cusp of that but he's always been sort of in the conversation for the top so we're going to see if he's worthy of that conversation From Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, weighing in at 250 pounds, the show done. And here comes Shogun. A man who's had an interesting career since he first um, came out to PBW. Sort of had like pretty good swing of things, pretty good string of wins. Was on a nasty losing streak for a brief while, but has originally come back with some really high profile wins. And I think if he's able to beat Harris, that might be the highest profile win the dude's ever had. So that's what makes this match so interesting to me. I don't know if these two have fought before. But we're gonna find out as Shogun starts by going to the top rope, interestingly, but Harris chasing him down and knocks him down off of his perch. And between the two, they are both quite big men, but Shogun is surprisingly more athletic. He's a lot more quick. You know, he's more likely to go for springboard and, as you can see here, going to the top rope. If you're wondering why this is red and white themed, it's because technically in the calendar year of the game, this does take place during Christmas time. So... Remember they have a 20 count out here. Shogun. Taking control. Right at the gate. Hey Blitz, welcome dude. You 
you look at this is the first match and it's not too far in Harris with the arm stretching and the stumps to the back there taking it to Shogun early keeping granted which I think is smart because Shogun is the bigger fly between the two. Oh my god straight jacket DDT Shogun good counter there going for a chin lock trying to wear down the bigger man well they're, they're both very big men there, there's a lot of uh, beef in that ring right now elbows Harris breaks out and military press dropped into the uppercut there's some grand pan on Shogun one just a one count Shogun a bit too fresh to be pinned this early Drop kick the leg, but Shogun avoids that beautiful flying Rana there. <laughs> yes. Meats. All the meats. A lot of one count so far. I don't think there's been a single two count yet, but then again, it's still early, still early goings. And again, that dragon, that like running dragon runner from Shogun. And he's going to the top. You might be thinking about going for the shuriken. No, goes for an elbow drop instead. Still a really big move. The Shogun pulling Harris away from the rope. And all that massive pouncing tackle there from Shogun. Knees looking for something bigger, looking to capitalize with the death certificate. There it is, that backpack stunner. A bit of delay in the pin, will that give Harris enough time? One, two, Harris kicks out. Cancer from Harris there, he's, he's got to put some stuff together here. Good on drag. Shogun doing a little hop, skip, and jump of happiness. Harris faking the netbreaker instead of delivering an elbow right to the back of Shogun's skull. Good shot from Shogun there. Well, I think that was Harris. Anyway, back in the ring they go in cravat style sort of suplex? I don't really know what to call that. Lowercase AA from Harris. And ooh, big punches from Harris. Counter with the knee there. Going to feel a bit more momentum in his veins right now. Going for something big there, but. Shogun. Ooh, Shogun was countered that time. Big headbutt from Harris, and Harris looking for the horror bomb. Getting all of that. Sickening crash. Not immediately going for the pin, so it delayed it a bit. One, two, just a two. Yeah, I, I, I think it. I don't remember who, where I heard the phrase lowercase AA. I don't remember if it was you or from Chris Edwards Fed, but I remember hearing it and just thinking that's a great name for it. And Harris looking for the go to hell. Right into the pin. One, two, three, Harris 
Picking up the win in the opener. Fairly competitive back and forth for the most part. Harris was on the back foot for a while, but managed to put enough together, managed to get the big victory. Yeah, so it was you I heard it from first, which I'm fine with because it's it's such a cool like it's such a cool little line. Here is your winner, Harris. And Harris picks up the big dub in this opening match. In the only non-title match on the card, there are six matches after this, all with belts on the line. And I think we're guaranteed at least one title change. I don't really know when that'll come. But I'm always looking forward to seeing what happens. No, not the main event. There's like six other matches. <laughs> uh, next up is for the Limitless Championship, Taylor Jones versus Selena Adams. Now, as always, ask the person who created the core um, what kind of match they want to make, because the Limitless Championship lets them make any match they want, and Boop, who creates Taylor, just said, oh, just an all-singles match. I was like, okay, so that's what we got. So this will be probably a highly entertaining match, and yeah, we'll see, won't we? The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and is for the Ultraviolet Non-Stop Championship! I really should change it so the title doesn't have AVW on it anymore. Oh! You think that the title will change hands, so you think Yamashita will lose it in his first defense? Really? I think it's one of my least favorite stages, because I, I, I hackneyed this one together myself. I think the idea was for it like, um, I don't know if you hear what I was saying, but it was supposed to be sort of around Christmas time because in the calendar year of the game it takes place in December. Obviously we're in the middle of June, like in real life, so, you know, take what you can get. I mean, to be fair, my P my W and AVW arenas weren't made by me. Like, the old ones were pretty okay, but the guy who made James Kenny actually made those arenas for me. And I think they look great. Also, you'll notice a snafu, because you might notice that Taylor Jones's um, top under the grey one she's wearing is red. As soon as she gets in the ring, that magically changes to blue. Yeah, right there is the current Lumilus champion. I spent less time talking about the stars going to the ring, but yeah, Selena Adams, former PBW Women's Champion, obviously. Um, highly decorated superstar Taylor Jones, former... I think, well, fir first ever and former Athena Champion, when that was a title. The Learn Lewis title is basically the spiritual successor to that, so... And she's had a really good run with it so far in Year 3.
Introducing the challenger from Green Bay, Wisconsin, Selena Adams. Introducing the champion from London, England. She is the ultraviolet nonstop champion, Taylor Jones. And Taylor, going to be hunting the belt over soon. Rough taking it. Here we go, regular singles match for a title. It's designed to be defended however you want. Taylor Jones starting strong with a drop kick to the leg. <laughs> and anyone but TJ Oit. Boop, did you help with his account? Taylor Jones getting onto a strong start there. Pulling Selena to the outside. Lots of kicks, lots of strikes. Big elbow. Two. Three. Four. Big super kick to the gut. And Taylor drops Selena face first onto the apron. The hardest part of the ring, uh, if you didn't know. <laughs> Snap my driver from Taylor. And now going for the sticks and Jones. It's quite early. One, two, Selena kicks out. I was going to be a bit miffed if the same thing <laughs> happens. Because <laughs> remember, Taylor defended um, the Limitless title in the ladder match against Catherine Love, and like, that was sort of it. You know? It was sort of a nothing match, it was over quick. I thought we were going to get the same thing against Selena here. Ooh, went for the Hurricane Ronda, but Selena caught her with a power bomb. They're working over the legs of Taylor Jones. Taylor able to escape. And I think it's a I think it's a good looking driver. I snap my drivers go, it's pretty decent. And I think Taylor went for a springboard knee, but who can't for Selena and that cross arm neck breaker. Taylor taking Selena to the other end of the ring when she didn't have to for that lovely rope move. Because luchador wrestling is a thing. <laughs> oh, good. Elbows from Selena. Good cancer. Good cancer from Taylor. The knees to the back. You, you, you can't say sure shank yet, he hasn't appeared. And he won't for a while. <laughs> One, 
Anyway, one, two, three. Taylor retains. All righty. Not even after a finisher, come on. Yeah, I'll be honest, I did I did expect Taylor to keep this one. Here is your winner, and still ultraviolent non-stop champion, Taylor Jones. And Taylor Jones, still the champion at the end of the night. Merry Christmas in June to her. But still, we have five more title matches besides this. And who knows what the hell could happen. As we have a women's tornado tag match. Well, a, a tornado tag match. It's not specifically a women's one. For, uh, I have no clue what celebration that, that is. I'll have to look it up after the stream's over. Uh, yeah, but a tornado tag match. For Ye old Women's Tag Team Championships, the PB... Uh, well, just the Women's Tag Team Championships. I should nix the PBW off of it. Really, shouldn't I? But yeah, the Noel train going in for another defense. Against the Killer Queens, who've had a couple of chances at the belts. They're able to defeat uh, the Kingsman pretty handily recently on the Go Home Show. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes. I'm singing because you can't hear the music through the Twitch screen, which sucks. But yes, the Killer Queens. I reckon that this is the night. And I might be wrong. I think this could be their night. I think they could win the titles. They picked up a hell of a lot of momentum as of late. They're just an exciting tag team. I mean, they beat the Kingsmen with one tag finisher. Because Kelly Kaplan didn't break it up. I'm still pissed about that. Blitz, are you still pissed about that? Because I am. Well, I'm actually annoyed about that still. I know it was only a few days ago, but meh. Anyway, here come the champions. Angie. I, I'm also Angie. Go, get up. Yeah, here are your uh, women's tag team champions, Quinn Edwards and Noel Park. Heading into the sixth defense? They've defended the titles a lot of times. Uh, I think they've all been on pay-per-view because these titles are interchangeable between brands, much like the Limitless title is. So yeah, viva la see.
the way to the ring, the All-American, Caitlin and Polly, the Queen, the Queen. The All-American, Caitlin, Holly, the Queen, and their opponents. They are the champions, Quinn Edwards and Noah Parker, the Nice Girls. I really should give them a different name that isn't the Nice Girls. <laughs> it's, it doesn't exactly strike fear. I get that, like, Noel Bark doesn't exactly strike fear into people because she's small and adorable. But, you know, she's been a, a women's tag champ for a long time now. So. Anyway, starting off, and remember, this is Tornado Tag Style, so both teams in the ring. And if my memory serves, it's also False Count Anywhere? So this is going to be a mental match. Holly focused on Noel Park, Quinn focused on Kaylin. And Holly immediately turning her attention to stop Quinn from having Kaylin in the Brock Lock. Big curve off from Noel Park. Good hip toss from Holly. Kick to the back, Noel rolling to the outside, Holly joining her. Unlimited time out here because again, falls count anywhere. And looks like Quinn and Kaylin get the same idea. The ref doesn't really know which uh, which two to go to. He goes straight for Quinn and Kaylin. I think there was something attempted on the other side that the ref was sort of running to try and call, but I don't really know what happened there. Elbow from Quinn. To Kaylin. Lowercase AA from Kaylin. Shout out to, uh, to Blitz. And Izzy fed for that one. <laughs> Shout out to Blitz, wherever he may be. Anyway, oh, massive power bomb to Quinn Edwards. Holly, I think she smashed Noel Park against the sto uh, stones? Against the steps there. Oh, the axe kick to the back of Quinn's head. And Noel was thrown right into the, uh... <laughs> he's in Hell in a Cell. What's it like in Hell in a Cell, my friend? Maybe a counter from Holly. Oh, the neck breaker from Kaylin. And Noel face smashed face first onto Ye Old. Uh, a ring apron. I don't know who keeps saying Ye Old tonight. The Killer Queen's looking quite dominant right now. And pin attempt, just a one count, Queen kicks out. Big close lines from Holly to Noel Park. Holly! Looking for the whatever the fuck that's called. Oh my god! We have new women's tag champions. That was... A lot of these matches have been going quick. Killer Queen standing tall here tonight after an impressive showing, a pretty dominant one at that too. Holly Queen got the finish with her submission move. 
What the hell is it called? Oh, that's the Royal Stretch. Is that is a signature? That's not even a finisher. That's twice that matches have ended in, in signatures, not finishes. But next, for the PBW Tag Team Championships, former champions, the Lancers, are looking to regain them against the men. Uh, from the men, they lost them to the Paymakers, Michael Young and Nate Slater. I really hope this is a good match, because a lot of them have been short and weird so far. I mean, yeah, that match really was a mess, though, to be honest. That's the thing with, like, a lot of more chaotic matches. Sometimes you'll get some bonkers stuff, and, like, it'll be really, really good. Other times it'll just be over way too quick. I think the worst example was one in year two. I don't remember who the champs were going in, but they lost them to a team at the time called Hudson Hawkins. And basically it was, like... It was sort of like an Extreme Rules match. I'm going to get the story out before I actually start this one. It was like an Extreme Rules match, and the Hudson Hawkins were going in as the challengers. And they won after one finisher about two and a half minutes into the match. Like, yeah, it, it, yeah. We, we don't talk about those times, though. But the, the match we just had between Killer Queens and Earl Train very much reminded me of that. And there are the former champs, the men who ran the PBW men's tag team division for the better part of the year, up until War of Attrition. They fought their way to become the contenders for the titles again. So let's see if they're able to, to win them back. And also, if the costumes look familiar, then yes, that's because I based them off of Mortal Kombat. Caesar is supposed to be Jax Briggs, and um, John Spikers is supposed to be Kano. And it's sort of, sort of a joke, because obviously Fenn, who created John Spikers, is Australian, and Kano is Australian, so... Sort of thing there. And uh, in real life, it's a funny joke for me, because I'm a big, muscular black man with metal arms, so... I think you could ruin many a video game franchise just by changing one letter. Anyway, here are your newly minted PBW Tag Team Champions, having defeated their opponents at the previous pay-per-view. The good old pain makers! We got Michael Young and Nate Slate. Bloke, why? I mean, I've heard Ass Effect before. Everyone's heard Ass Effect.
at a combined weight of 553 pounds, they are the prestigious champions, Michael Young and Nate Slater, the powers of pain. Caesar Stone and John Spectacular. <laughs> anyway, those are the tag titles on the line. Also, it's spelled Caesar like, like that, with an A, because I'm British and we do things correctly. Oh fuck! This is also a tornado tag. Ask for it. I I think it's just normal tornado tag, no full scan anywhere. Both members of Lance is looking strong right now. Good flapjack there from Caesar. <laughs> the card Caesar Stone. Good Lariat shout out to his partner Michael Young there from Nate Slater. That military press drop. Michael Young. Th th this is just a bunch of big, thick lads. I love a battle like this. Massive power bomb to Michael. For the big lariat to Caesar. And the power bombs keep coming from Michael Young. This is a close line down the top. Pitch is stumped to the stomach from Spartacus. He is Spartacus. Good drop kick there from Michael. Good belly to belly from uh, Spartacus. Oh, I almost said Caesar. That's not who that is. Excuse me. Good counter from Michael. Went for the boot there, but missed. Has Spikus in the corner. Michael thinking they're going for here. Good lariat from Nate Slater. Oh, Brainbuster onto the top rope. And they hit Caesar. The big deadlift sort of uh, bomb suplex thingamajig. Boston Crab attempts, but Marcus broke out. Big clothesline from Caesar. Big info suplex from Spartacus. Caesar with that knee. A lot going on right now, I love it. And the fall of Rome to Maggle. And that Laria again from Slater. They're all day for him. Good counter. And again. Spinebuster, the Paymakers, the current champion, standing tall over their opponents. Good shoulder tackle. I don't know what the hell Spikers did there. Anyway, inverted belly to belly suplex. Uh, Matt Slab from Caesar. Looking for it again, maybe? No, going for a stone cutter. Michael Young is looking to plant. Spikers has him. Jones suplex into the pain maker. One, two. Spikers kicks out. Oh my god, Caesar just straight yeeted out of the ring. Big tilt to roll backbreaker, Spartacus. Oh, good counter DDT from Caesar. Centurion Spear to Michael Young. One, two. Oh my goodness. At the last moment, 
with the former champion tall. Big suplex there, big face smash into the apron. A knee from Caesar. Speaking of knees, I was just cracking mine, that hurts. And Nate drops right into the apron, planked onto it. Big spine buster. Michael Young and back in the ring goes by Cousin Young nice elbow from Nate with the counter there turns back us round is looking for another pain maker one two Three, the pain makers retain makers. And that's been the best match of the card so far. Yeah, pretty solid. A lot of bodies flying around. Went a bit longer than the others, so it was a bit more cohesive. So yeah, and also happy the paymakers retained. And the Paymakers happy to still be holding on to their titles. So, so far we've gone retention, title change, retention. Will we see another title change in the match after this, which I believe and I hope I'm right. It is TLC match for the International Championship, a rematch between Alex Graves and Brian Black. So I'm quite looking forward to this one. I mean, who, who knows, Blitz? You might be right. This could be the, the match of the night, and I hope it is. Because most of the cards have been kind of, like, mostly naff, you know? The following contest is a table, ladders, and chairs. And it's for the prestigious International Championship. Introducing the challenger from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 220 pounds. And here comes the American Nightmare, Alex Graves. The former champion lost the title at Reverence. So this has been a long time going for this rematch, I guess you could say, because I don't give automatic rematches. I mean, I used to, but now I don't. But yeah. The title will probably not be around Brian Black's waist because it's already suspended above the ring. And these men will have to get a ladder uh, to climb up and pull the title down. Now, the last time we had a ladder match, it was quite boring. So, because that was that for the Lumis title.
All right, the the American Frightmare. There you go. I think it used to be the American Psycho or something at some point. Anyway, next up is the champ. Okay, apparently his name is just not being called. So this is current champion Brian Black. The only member of the Vigilant uh, uh, to be holding a title right now. I mean, the other members are Jacob Nitro, who recently turned heel and joined them, and their leader in City of Sterling, who is a massive meme bastard. I don't think you've seen him wrestle yet, Blitz, but Sterling is great. I love his character. He's another one of Fence Creations. Here we go, champion, challenger. <laughs> the shitter. <laughs> I guess you were lowering the run there. Anyway, good start to this match. Really good, uh, I was going to say a sort of suplex, sort of an STO into a suplex from Brian Black. The champion stone strong is my point. And Graves with a double leg takedown. There's Brian on the apron, Graves. Looking for a... Where is he looking for? Oh! Oh my god! Right through a table! Right out the gate! And his graves... He's going right for the ladder. I think he might have put... No, Brian Black picking up a different table. It recovered quite quickly from being put through a table. Yeah, it was such a good spot, I wasn't expecting that. Oh my god. So the chicken wing dropped into a knee gut buster there. And they were setting up a table. And good cravat neck breaker there from Graves. Graves really taking his brown black right now. And that side effect again. And oh I think Brian was looking for a spine buster. Graves had an answer for that.
and looking for the stumps of the fingers of Brian Black. And Graves has the ladder set up, he's going to the top. He's going to look to pull the title down, but Brian Black right behind him. Shots to the back. And the, the title sort of fell from over there. A power bomb off the ladder to the ground. Graves' turn to get Brian Black off the ladder. Returning the favor with a power bomb. For the lost soul. <laughs> the ladder won the belt. Who can beat the ladder to become the champion though after that? That's the question. Graves has Black down, but wisely he's not going immediately for Lad yet because he knows how this type of match works. Right in the back of the uh, back of the head there. And oh, was probably going for a suplex, but Brian with the counter. And beautiful remake style DDT. Big neckbreaker there too. Not putting Graves out of commission just yet. And Brian Black also not immediately going for the title. Trying to work out what he is trying to do here. Graves throwing right into the ladder. What's Brian Black going to do? Oh, the elbow right to the back of the head again. Graves using the ropes to pull himself up. And has Black won it? Yep. God damn it. There's really been nothing to chew on tonight, has there? Except for that table spot. Yeah, well, Brian Black retains. No complaints there. Here is your winner, and still prestigious international champion, the Prince, Brian Black. Brian Black, standing tall. And we have two more matches. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Anyway, next up, Catherine Love versus Valencia. Catherine Love herself is a former PBW Women's Champion. Valencia is the current one. Now, Valencia had a reign of terror with the women's tag titles alongside Haley Hudson in year two. Will she have the similar thing in year three with the PBW Women's Championship? We will find out. I mean, at least that, like, table spot near the start was really cool.
making her way to the ring from Boston, Massachusetts, Catherine Love. There's the challenger, Catherine Love. Wait, did I remember to put the title on the line? He does look a bit like Shade or so <laughs> Oh, that, oh that, that got me. That was good. Anyway, yeah, Catherine Love, former champion in year two. Um, I think she took part in the Golden Path tournament, but I think she lost, so who knows. And her I really should change this entrance because it makes me uncomfortable to look at now. Anyway, here comes the champion, presumably putting a title on the line. Uh, Valencia, otherwise known as Davina Rose. So, yeah, she won the title in impressive fashion at War of Attrition. In fact, winning two matches that night, one was a match to get on to the main card to challenge for the title in the first place. Then she won the damn thing. And, yep, here she is. First defense. Hopefully, first defense. Hopefully, I actually made the match of that. As uh, the bottom of a cape goes crazy with the clipping right now. Again, really should change this entrance for next time because that's probably in poor taste. Wait, bollocks, it's not for the title. Uh, I, I, I done goofed. Should I let the match play out or should I like stop? And actually turn this into a dull match. Yeah, I could just actually make, uh, like a match for the title online on the return show. So I'll just do that instead. Yeah, I really can't. Alright, yeah, I'll, ju I'll just, like, uh, make a title match on the return show. Anyway. Uh, Catherine Love. Looking good here tonight. Against Valencia. Leave Rock. Good elbow.
Catherine Love going to the top rope. And massive frog splash. A lot of elevation on that. Good counter from Valencia. And I think Catherine Love is looking for the heartbreak. They're going to the top rope looking for oh big knee drop I think. Valencia rolled out of the way. And the touch of love into the pin. One, two, Valencia kicked out. I really hope I remember to make the main event for the title because I'm going to be so fucking mad. Division from Valencia. Went for the boob kick, but good counter from Catherine. Into the corkscrew neck breaker. Catherine Love looking pretty strong right now of Valencia. Good elbow. Go counter from Catherine. Flips Valencia over the knee to the jaw. And that could be enough. Maybe. Two. Plenty of kicks out. I think she was going for the touch of love again. Good counter from Valencia, the uppercut. And is Valencia setting Catherine up for the drive by kick? What a shot there. That could be enough to put Catherine down. One, two, no, Catherine kicks out. there from Valencia, the sling blade. Draw kick to the back of the head. Uh, Pardon me. Is it weird that I'm kind of proud of that burp? And once you're looking for the moon stomp. To the pen. One, two, Catherine kicks out though. Catch a close line from Valencia. For a headstand, showing off a little bit here. Enter from Catherine. And, 
Oh, the Shining Wizard. And for a modified sharpshooter, it looks like. Catherine rolls through and escapes. For the love of God, I hope I remember to make the main event for the title. The upcut to the back of the head from Catherine. Close line. Another one. And a kick. And a kick. And doing some press ups because why the hell not? Valencia bash several times on the turnbuckle there. And that flip over knee. Drop kick right to the corner. And they're looking for the touch of love. And there it is, one, two, three. So Catherine Love could have won the title there. Oh god, I'm nervous. I really hope I remember to make the main event for the title. Anyway, this is probably the best match of the night so far, though. Here is your winner, Catherine Love! Catherine Love would be the new champion if I remembered to put the title on the line. But they didn't, because I'm an idiot. So, please God, please God, please God, please God. Yes, for the PBW World Championship. So this is for a title. Happy about that. Yamashita versus Dr. Wrestling Jr. Yamashita's first defense. I mean, oh, I've got faith Yamashita will pull through. Yeah. You know? Same weird as shit happen. I'm hoping this match saves the card, to be honest, because it's been. It, it's. It's just felt like a. The following like an average episode of the weekly stuff. And it's for the prestigious World Championship. And there's the champ. Not the champ, that's the challenger. <laughs> PhD, PhD, PhD. Yeah, Dr. Wrestling Jr. A former champion himself, to be honest. He's got a lot of titles in a lot of places. A uh, former PBW world champ, so I'm going to see if he's going to be able to win it back from Yamashita. Well, I say win it back, he didn't lose the title to Yamashita. But I think he lost it to Chris Princess, technically. Then Princess lost it to Satoru, then Satoru lost it to Drake, then Drake lost it to Yamashita. 
And tonight, Yamashita is going to lose it to... to I'm getting... I'm getting... Partially. I'm just really glad I remembered that to, to make this one for the title. We're Dr. Richard Jr., very decorated, very intelligent, has a lot of titles, has a lot of uh, doctorates. There's your champ. <laughs> the doc is not stinky, he's very hygienic. But there's your world champion, Yamashita. Fresh off of winning in what is still my favorite match of year three. A two out of three falls classic with Drake Harrison. And Yamashita barely holding the title aloft. This might be the last time he sees it, but who can say? You know, sometimes you run out of shit to say when there's a long intro. <sighs> what a bu what a belt. Introducing the challenger. From Tijuana, Mexico, weighing in at 204 pounds, Dr. Introducing the champion, from Owina, Japan, weighing in at 251 pounds, he is the prestigious world champion. Yamashita! Stinky like you during multi-person matches? <laughs> or, or like just running out of shit to say when there's a lot of people. Anyway, there's the title now held by the ref. He should run away with it while he can and declare himself champion. Uh, no, he can't do that. So, it, it's been a weird night in Alberta, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. But this is the main event and hopefully it blows the roof off the place. Doc with a strong start. And big hurricane run to the Yamashita Doc taking it to the champion early. Another hurricane runner. Big slam there from Doc. Looking for a cross face. Good catch of the leg and Doc with the common Geary. Really taking it to Yama. The drop kick right to the back. And oh, Yum shoots with the counter there, and monkey flip. Not even from the corner, from like the middle of the ring. Oh, 
Taking a big knee drop. Into the corner. And Yama looking for maybe that rope. I thought he was going for a sle uh, dragon sleeper, but he went for a sort of cutter there. Good counter from Yamashita. I think Doc might have been trying to go for the apple a day, but I'm not really sure. Elbow to the chest. One. Just one. Good shots to the back there from Doc. Now Doc looking to end it soon. Looking for the apple a day. And there it is. Right into the cutter and into the pin. The ref taking wall one, two. Yama kicks out. You have to remember, if you saw that 2 out 3 falls match, Drake got the first fall and Yamashita got the last two. This is not 2 out 3 falls, but... He's, it's not looking good for Yama right now. Good moonsault there from Doc. Good counter. The common Giri again from Doc. Pin off the hook and run, a one, two, Yama kicks out. I mean, it might, it might take more than one apple a day. And Yamashita finally showing something with a torture rack bomb. Close line. Another one. And a good bit of height on that last one. Looking to take Doc maybe on a tour of the islands. Into the pen. One, two. I think Doc is way too fresh. He's put out too much damage, but he could also be tired out himself. And the power bomb. Lung blower, the snap down. Dragging Doc away from the ropes, that's very smart. One, two, three. What the fuck was this pay per view? I want I wanted this to be better. I really did. But I'm I'm not a fan of how this turned out. Yeah, it was it was it was strange. Like a match of the night for me was the match between Catherine and Valencia. Even if it should have been for the title, that's probably the best one on the card. Also, there was only one title change, which was the uh, the women's tag titles. This was like this was just a very abrupt pay per view. You know, like a lot of it just came about and ended so quick. But yeah, uh, should probably set up a card for the return show. Not now. I mean, the main event is of the PBW side is going to be uh, Catherine Love versus Valencia for the women's tag uh, for the women's PBW women's title. 
you, you did predict one title change. The thing is, you thought it was going to be this one between Doc and Yama, and that didn't happen. I was quite surprised at that too, but really happy Yama retained. Oh, Mini! Ugh, anyway. Uh, fuck it, yeah. Um, that'll have had it for the night. Um, thank you to anyone who's going by, and thank you to Blitz for keeping me company in the, uh, in the old chat. Uh, log thingy magic. So, yeah, um, I'll see you probably on Tuesday for the return show. And as always, thank you for watching your awesome good night. Sorry this couldn't have been better, but there you go. That's just how it happens sometimes.